When Steam Deck was first announced, and then with it, SteamOS 3.0, I was pretty skeptical that a Linux system would be able to easily run games made for Windows. The Steam machines that Valve had made previously failed for a lot of reasons, but the biggest reason, in my opinion, was that Valve was asking devs to port their games to an operating system that had a very small install base. The devs were not interested in that. It's a lot of work with very little return. With the Steam Deck and with SteamOS 3.0, Valve injected Proton into the mix, which is a translation layer that basically watches for Windows API calls and then substitutes the compatible Linux API call. The game gets exactly what it needed and doesn't realize that it's not running on Windows. I'm simplifying it a lot in, in, you know, quite a bit for this video because otherwise the video would be way too long. I'll let Pierre Le Griffet explain it a lot better than I can in a very short time. As a little bit of background, Proton is a compatibility layer distributed through Steam. It's downloaded and set up automatically when running any game that needs it. It's made up of a collection of different open source projects, including a heavily modified distribution of Wine. It is not an emulator meaning that your game's executable code runs as is, without any modifications. However, when the app makes an API call that would normally go to an external Windows OS library, that call goes into Proton code instead. The call is then implemented using Linux APIs and open standards such as Vulkan. But sometimes games won't launch using Valve's version of Proton. Good news, there are lots of different versions of Proton, and up until now, I've always recommended an app called Proton Up QT in order to get access to those other versions of Proton. It still works great, but I think the UI of this is a lot better. It's called Proton Plus, and I found out about it up from this post over at Gaming on Linux, which is a great site you should absolutely bookmark it. Proton Plus has access to tons of different versions of Proton. It's free, it's got a great UI, and I think it has a lot of potential. So in today's video, I wanna show you how to use Proton Plus, and I wanna talk about what I like about it and what I don't like about it. But they're not sponsoring this video. This video is sponsored by Ugreen. Hey man, what are you up to? Uh, editing a video. I was wondering if I could charge my phone. Sure. Ooh, can I charge my Steam Deck too? Yeah, no problem. How many things can I charge on this at once? Three, two USB-C and one USB-A. Awesome, I'll charge this as well. What's that? Not important. This is the Ugreen Nexode 165 watt retractable power bank. It can provide up to 100 watts of power via a single USB-C cable, which can charge a 14 inch MacBook Pro from zero to 54% in just 30 minutes, or 165 watts divided between two USB-C ports. But it actually has three ports with two USB-C and one USB-A, so it can charge up to three devices at the same time no matter what they are. With most battery banks, you also have to have a cable, but this has a built-in durable retractable cable, which is more than two feet long. But because it's retractable, it's only as long as you need it to be. Ugreen has done retraction tests over 25,000 times, bend tests over 10,000 times, so you know that it is built to last and you have one less thing to bring with you. The battery bank has a 20,000 milliamp hour battery and it can fully charge an iPhone 16 nearly four times, but it's still low enough that you can take it on a plane without having to worry. But if you're looking for something smaller, they have a 65 watt retractable charger as well. So if you have lots of tech that needs to be topped off, no matter what it is, Ugreen has you covered. And I've got some great news. If you're watching this video early, you can get up to 40% off Ugreen Prime Day deals by checking out the link in the description. Again, check out Ugreen Prime Day deals in the description and a huge thanks to Ugreen for being a longtime sponsor here at the Nerd Nest. Now, Back to what I was saying. First, let's get it installed. Press the Steam button on your Steam Deck or your Lenovo Legion Go S or whatever other hardware that you're running Steam OS on, and then navigate down to power, then select switch to desktop mode. Alternatively, you can just hold down the power button to get to the same menu. After a few moments, you'll be in desktop mode, and it looks a lot like Windows or Mac OS. It's actually pretty easy to navigate. I'm not sure why, but I tried searching for Proton Plus on the Discover Store, and it wouldn't show up. So in order to get it to show up in the Discover Store, this is what I did. Open up Firefox and then come back to this YouTube video. Click the link in the description down below that like button and it'll take you to the GitHub for Proton Plus. Scroll down and click Get It on Flathub. On the right hand side, there's a button that says Install. 
Click on that. A pop-up will show up. Click on the little folder icon. This will open up your downloads folder, and now you can close Firefox as we don't need it anymore, and double-click that new file. This will open up the Discover Store where you can click the green icon that says Install from Flathub. Once it's installed, you can click Launch, and then go ahead and close the Discover Store. We don't need that anymore. By the way, if you want to run this in the future, you don't actually have to open the Discover Store again. You can just click the Menu button on the bottom left and start typing Proton, and it'll show up there where you start. Let's take a look at the UI here. First, we have runners on the left and games on the right. Runners are different versions of the Proton compatibility layer made by different people. I have to admit the only one that I've ever needed to use was Proton GE, but depending on the games that are in your library, you might find others more useful. Let's use Proton GE as an example though, since that's the one I'm most familiar with. If we start by clicking on Proton GE, it's going to show us all the different versions that Glorious Egg Roll has posted so far. I'm going to grab the latest version. I can click on the More Information button and it will tell me exactly what this version does. This particular version fixes a black screen on Doom Eternal as well as adds some fixes for Blade and Soul Neo. Let's close that and then click the Download button and we can watch a little download bar fill up. Now you can see because I have version 10-8 installed, I have a trash button next to it instead of a download button, so I can easily see which ones are installed and which ones aren't. Let's trash that version because I don't really need it. A menu will pop up asking if I'm sure I want to do this. Go ahead and click yes. I'll install another one so we can see the next steps. Now head on over to the games tab. Here you can see which games are installed on your system and you can select the compatibility tool that works best for each game. Come to think of it, I should probably download a few more versions just so I can show you this next part. The next part is actually broken right now. I hope they fix it soon. First, we have to kill Steam as it says on the bottom of this window. So in the taskbar on the bottom right, right click the Steam button and click Exit Steam. This part of the software is supposed to let you pick your compatibility tool without going through Steam. But as you can see, no matter what I do, it just crashes each time. I'll fire Steam up later to show you how to select the compatibility tool in Steam and in gaming mode, but once this bug is fixed, you wouldn't need to do that. We also have a few icons next to each one. I can modify the game's launch options. This is really handy for games that have launchers. I can open up the Proton DB page for any game I have installed so I can quickly find information about how I can run my game better. And the three dots can get me quick access to where the game is stored on my drive. Let's scroll down to The Witcher 3 and click Proton DB button. Here you can see it opens up my browser and takes me right to ProtonDB where the first post shows me a command about how to skip the launcher. If I click on my Modify Launch Options button for The Witcher 3, I can then enter the command there and hit Apply. Now, when I play The Witcher 3, the launcher won't come up, which is always a win. Okay, let's head back into gaming mode so I can show you how to change compatibility tools that you've downloaded without going back to the desktop each and every time. Let's close Proton Plus and double click on Return to Gaming Mode. Now let's select a game. For this demonstration, it doesn't really matter which one I'm going to use, so I'm going to use one I just picked up yesterday, that's Katana Zero. Open up the Settings cog on the right hand side and go down to Properties. Now go down to the Compatibility and check Force the use of a specific Steam Play compatibility tool. A new drop down is going to show up underneath that, and if you open it, you'll see all the different compatibility tools that we installed when we had Proton Plus open in desktop mode. Pick the one that you want, then hit back, and launch your games as you normally would. By the way, if you just got your Steam Deck and you want to master the trackpads, check out this video right here. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill, stay rad, and thanks for watching.